gosh. Well, welcome to Lake Break. This is a series kind of devoted on this channel to breaking down bodies of water. Today, I'm giving myself about seven hours to catch a five bass limit that weighs 16 pounds. I'm actually fishing a lake that I've only fished one other time before. This is Cedar Creek Lake down in Kentucky, and I fished it back in the fall. But when I fished it in the fall, I said I really wanted to come here during the pre-spawn and just see what this lake is all about, because I just felt like this lake had a lot of potential. If you read some online reports, like there's some big fish in here. Now, one thing I believe in is if you do not know where to go, when you get to a new body of water, don't go far at all. I literally just launched a boat like 30 yards away from where I'm sitting right now. I'm kind of at the entrance, the mouth of a good looking creek that kind of splits off in two different directions. I'm already looking at my graph. I see grass and I see bait. So there's really no reason for me to go anywhere. I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna start fishing. I'm gonna try to dissect this lake. We're looking at water temperatures right now on this lake at 52.5 degrees. I'm guessing it's gonna warm up probably two, three, four degrees throughout the day. It's supposed to be 57 and sunny with a light breeze today. So I think it could turn into a really good day. I also think that there may be a later in the day bite, but we're just gonna see what happens. This video is brought to you by my apparel company, Fin Fishing. Fin Fishing is one of the only fishing apparel companies on the market that has a USA made sun shirt, a sun shirt not made overseas. And right now, if you use the coupon code BOGO cast 50 if you buy one sun shirt you get the second one for 50 percent off that is absolutely one of the best deals that you will find for a sun shirt made in the u.s all you got to do is add the two sun shirts to cart that you like use that coupon code it will discount you at checkout shopping at fin fishing is truly the best way to support this channel and help me keep bringing videos like this to you so click those links down below in the description now, what I know from this lake when I came and fished it in the fall is that there's a tremendous amount of standing timber here as well as cedar trees, but there's also some milfoil grass and I really like fishing grass. I know I wanted to concentrate a little bit more on grass. So I'm going to throw a chatterbait around, maybe a spinnerbait around a little bit and just try to figure out what the grass looks like and what these fish are doing. I think what I'm going to do is work my way into this pocket. Uh, with the water temp being 52, 53, you should have some fish that are really starting to move up. I'm trying to figure out where these fish are gonna be. Are they gonna be right there on the bank or are they gonna be more in the middle of this pocket? It may change throughout the day, but I'm definitely wanting to throw a swim bait around a little bit. And uh, I'd love to get on a good swim bait bite. Hmm. Just had one chasing my glide bait in. I was just about to turn around. I'm kind of getting towards the back of this pocket. I'm really not seeing just a whole lot of activity back here. There's the first one, right when I was about to leave. Looks like that. Here we go, baby. First one. All right, fish number one of the day. We are about 45 minutes into fishing. So love to get off to a good start. Just a solid fish to get started. Cut them on a Berkeley stun of jerk bait. So we're gonna put this fish towards our towards our goal. He comes in at 2.07. 2.07. Nice way to get us started. 
Thank you, buddy. You know, what was kind of interesting about that fish is he was definitely more in the center of this pocket and kind of coming in here, watching my 360 and live, I'm definitely seeing more fish actively in the center of the pocket here. And I'm guessing with the cold night, you have a lot of fish that are just kind of pushed off right here in the middle. I do think with the warmer day we're going to have, these fish are gonna kind of transition up onto the flatter areas where I might be able to catch them on a spinner bait or that big swim bait around some of this wood cover kind of on that top edge of the grass. So I'm really looking forward to that because I think that that could be a lot of fun. That particular fish, I had just made a random cast out in the middle and then I realized that there was a fish following my bait when I was looking at my live and I actually sped it up really quick and that triggered that fish to come up there and eat it. And so even though this, this, you know, water temp is 52 degrees, sometimes even in colder water, speeding a bait up can still trigger a fish. So I'm just going to have to play around with the cadence a lot to try to see if, if that's the deal or if I have to do something else to catch them. But we're going to find out. I just caught that fish and I had another one burst off the bottom at it. And if you look in this little, little area, there's just a little bit more grass little bit higher off the bottom and I think it's just enough to kind of separate these fish just a little bit taller grass if you look this way you can see how the, good that grass looks and if you look over here you can see not much grass so that is what those fish were sitting in that Berkeley stunna I believe that's a table rock shad color man I have caught fish everywhere on that color to me it is just by far one of the best little baits to catch them when you're dealing with i mean 50 60 degree water temps oh <laughs> well that is something you do not want to do right there almost backlash bad but that jerk bait <laughs> That thing is done. Done skis. I really hope I have another one. I was just talking about this jerk bait and how much I love it and how many fish I've caught. I'm actually tempted too to try that hanky panky. Let's try the hanky panky. I'm feeling it. You know, something that I think is really important as a fisherman is always to look for correlations between different things. If you look at the bank, right where I'm sitting, there's a very small indentation in the bank. You know, the rest of the bank that I've been fishing is pretty flat, I guess you could say, pretty straight. And, you know, this indentation, I don't know that it's necessarily what has made the grass grow a little bit better in this area, but I don't, there, it might be the reason that there's a little bit bigger flat right there where this grass is. So I might have to go look around for more indentations like that if this ends up becoming a pattern or I end up catching more. Well, I fished in this small creek arm a little bit longer than I would have really liked to, but I was just thinking that something was gonna happen. We've been in here for about an hour and uh, I'm gonna make a move. When I was here in the fall, I actually caught some fish flipping some deeper uh, cedar trees. And I think that some of those cedar trees in some of the right areas could be perfect little staging places for bass to wait before they go up and spawn, kind of that pre-spawn staging area. And that's really the, the time frame we are in right now. So I'm actually gonna rig up a rod real quick um, for flipping. Probably gonna flip a jig around. So I'm actually putting a little bit of backing on my reel real quick and then I'll put some 20 pound line on. Look at that. Is that not just a little sexy jig right there? Mm-hmm. I'd eat that. Yes, sir. Now the biggest thing when you're fishing trees like this is really figuring out if there's a specific type of tree these fish like 
whether that's maybe they like a certain hardwood. And the other big thing is the depth. What depth zone? Maybe they like all the trees in six foot, four foot, 10 foot. So you really just gotta experiment. I'm not gonna spend a, probably more than 20 minutes or so fishing this way because what you never wanna do as an angler is get caught up fishing history. <clears throat> Even though I caught them this way, definitely doesn't mean I'll catch them this way today. But at the same time, I've been to lakes before where I started not fishing history and then realized that the fish were doing a certain thing for a certain reason and they were still there. Dude, that fish shot out of the grass and put the brakes on. Big old crappie. Figured that's what that was. Look at that crappie. <clears throat> Little bass. Not a keeper there. Oh, just got fish number two. Another fish on the jerk bait. Small bass, but man, it's been, uh, I've been seeing a lot of fish, but they just haven't really been active. And I made a switch to an area where I had actually caught a fish here in the fall. And I know there was a big grass flat out here. And literally the first, first cast, that fish weighs 145. I, uh, I hook up with a fish and I saw a couple more there, so hopefully this is something. <clears throat> Come on, baby. After fishing this grass flat a little bit longer, I decided to move over to a creek channel swing bank and I threw a spinner bait and a glide bait for a little just to see if I couldn't do something a little bit different and catch a bass. Now, after not catching any bass, I looked at my map and I saw this old railroad track that spanned across the lake. So I decided to idle over it to see if I couldn't see any fish that may be still in some wintering holes. Those are all bass. <clears throat> okay. Just caught our third one. Look how cold that fish looks. You can just tell that it's been deep, wintering up and still. I mean, I'm out in the middle of the lake right now. I mean, he's not huge, but he's a, 
a 242. So <clears throat> we'll see. Maybe there's a lot more down there like that. I'm about to find out. Just a solid fish. It's fun though, just trying to figure out a new lake. Gosh, look how just look how ghost white that thing is. Let's see if there's more of them. <laughs> Let's freaking go. Gosh, it's been a while. I could tell that that fish was suspended pretty high in that tree. You know, it's been a pretty long time since I've got bit. I've really been trying to force the forward facing sonar, the really trying to use my electronics and you know, it's just, I've gotten a lot of followers. That's a 284, it's biggest fish of the day and whatnot, but it's just like, it's just not happening. And as much as I want it to happen, I'm like, I'm also just tired of looking at the electronics. So I picked up the jig, I picked up the bigger rod, and guess what? Biggest fish of the day within a few flips. And uh, I feel very good about this. I would have said that that fish would have been a small one uh, and it probably showed in the way that I set the hook, but hey, 284, that's a, that's a healthy one. I'm gonna do this for a little while because I just feel like it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, here we go, baby. That bass there came on one of my new favorite jigs, really. It's a little Outcast Tackle Cage Fighter jig with a little muscle back finesse crawl by X Zone. And that little guy right there, uh, man, it's it's just a perfect thing, man. As soon as I flipped that bait in, I that fish had to have been, I mean, sitting maybe two foot below the surface, because I noticed my my line sank real quick and then it stopped and then it just slowly was moving off. So I just decided to go ahead and check, and sure enough, there was a fish there. But he was like, toot, 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 toot. not like a real steady pull, but it was a good fish. I'm glad I got him out of there. So, gosh, that was fun. Let's do that a little bit more. Now, as you can see, I flipped and I flipped and I flipped and I didn't get any other bites. And after a little while, I decided to run up the lake to try to find some more off color water. And I noticed on Google Earth that there was a bridge. Usually bridges can be a really good area during the pre-spawn because they bottleneck. If a bass wants to move past a bridge, it really gets funneled into a smaller area, sometimes making them easier to catch. So I spent a little time fishing around this bridge, but I had no success. Success. So with about a half hour left in my day, I decided to run back to the area where I just felt like there was the most life. I really wanted to pick up my fifth keeper. And so I went back to the grass area just outside a major spawning pocket. Now, when I tried to pull up to the area where I'd caught a bass earlier, there was a boat sitting on it. So I decided to go up the lake a little bit to see how far the grass extended. You're kidding. Come on, baby. It's a good one, too. Stay down. No, don't come on. Come here, baby. Oh, 
how it's big. Big one. Another day. Oh no. Let's freaking go. Dude. Literally. I told you I was gonna fish till four. It's 357. Number five. I really just wanted to catch five. And we just ended the day. Literally, look at the time. Look at this. Can you see that on my phone? 357. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I know I'm not doing this for a tournament or anything like that, but I try to treat everything when I'm out here like it's a well like it's life or death and I really wanted to catch five and look how we ended it baby with a good one that's actually the biggest one of the day oh let's check out let's see how much weight we got we got a time for a couple more casts number five. Oh my gosh I am so pumped 361 let's freaking go <laughs> right at the end of the day Oh my gosh. 361, baby. Oh my gosh, that gets me so excited. I was literally just feeling so dejected for only catching four fish. Look at that. Oh my gosh. What a beautiful. All right, we got two more minutes. Let that fish go. Yes, baby. We got one minute. Oh my gosh, that really gets me excited. Just a little grass patch. Oh. There's another one. Oh, that's freaking, all right. That's not gonna help me at all, but number six. Uh, that's probably not a keeper here, but it's a 12 inch keeper back home. But gosh, that one rocketed off the bottom. I think these fish are starting to get a little more active. I'd kind of gotten away from them. Still a lot of fun. Well guys, it's four o'clock. Four o'clock on the dot. Oh, just turned 401. You see that? So we're gonna have to end the day. It was a tough day for me to be honest. You know, my my final weight with five fish was 1241. But gosh, you know what? That one fish at the end of the day that's that totally made it worth it i mean i'm 100 i had a lot of fish follow my jerk bait today and it just seems like they just didn't want to commit and i kept telling myself man i'm gonna run into them man i'm gonna run into them and i just kind of plucked one off here and there um but man it was still a lot of fun i had a lot of fun out here i hope you guys enjoy these style of videos i really try to break down the lake so that you guys can see how i attack it and hopefully it can help you to attack it the big the big player today ended up being the berkeley stunna uh, that's the one that i caught most of the fish on i fish it on an, an arc tharp series one eye jack rod with 12 pound test and I got a 7.1 gear ratio art gravity five reel. Uh, I caught my caught fish on a couple other things as well, but that that was the one I caught the majority of the fish on. If you want to watch another video that's kind of in this same style, I'm going to leave a link for the playlist of the lake breaks right here. Really enjoy you guys watching and I will see you guys in the next one.